Previously, on Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. Hey, wait a minute. Are, are you already in? Are you benchmarking Crisis? Hello, Internet Dwellers, and welcome back to 999. Sorry this episode is a little later than usual. I'm not gonna lie, I just started Persona 5 Royal, and it kinda monopolized more time than I had intended. But anyway, when we last left off, we had narrowly escaped the burning laboratory, our lungs still mostly intact, and now we're about to find out where the path beyond door 8 continues to. Junpei, Clover, and Lotus leapt out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. <sighs> Whew, thank God we got out of there. Yeah, finally. <coughs> yeah, now we just have to hope that the countermeasures in there actually put the fire out. I don't want to get trapped between a wall of frigid seawater and fire. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> Junpei's heart was pounding in his chest, and his whole body felt weak. He inhaled gulps of clean air, and with each one, he could feel his, be his body begin to calm down. Yeah, it hasn't been a good day to be Junpei's lungs. Between Zero smoking us out in there and having that little cardio exercise running down that hallway for the dead earlier... Uh... Well, they've been put under a lot of stress today. All right, let's go. Okay. They nodded to each other and started off down the hallway. Before long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Damn, none of these open. They're all locked. That's what I said, Lotus. How about that one? The final door sat in a corner of the hallway, looking very familiar. I can't imagine where that would pop up. Let's hope this is the door with the prize. Junpei grabbed the door handle and was about to pull it open when a voice cried out behind him. It was neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognized it. Ah, I know those sultry tones. Seven, get your sexy ass over here. There was no doubt the voice belonged to... Jumpy! Ah, well, June's good too, I suppose. Huh? He spun around. There, at the other end of the hall, Junpei saw human figures running toward him. As opposed to what? Any? I don't know, something about the phrase human figures is concerning in and of itself. Now I'm imagining something more uncanny. Three of them. June? Santa! Seven! They stopped short in front of Junpei and his companions, gasping for air. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Trying to catch our breath. What? But we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Hey guys! Could you come take a look at this? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. Hey, on the wall. A map of the ship's interior? Ah, oh, right. We didn't have one for this floor. It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then? Door 7 and... Door 8. Yep, they both eventually end up at this hallway. Man, Zero never gives us this shit until we've already gone and explored everywhere and figured everything out. I guess it does give us the benefit of having some perspective into areas we haven't entered yet. Like Door 3. Since all those squares there seem to be the hospital beds, I'm not really sure why they bothered to put that on the map, but... Well, it certainly helps our comprehension, I guess that's why. Uh... But it looks like door three over there on the left also dumps into this same hallway 
after passing through a small room there. Definitely not as convoluted a path as we had to take going through 7 or 8, but they do all seem to go back to this one spot. Yeah, isn't that what I said? Yeah, you called it, Seven. We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door 9. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door 9. That's how the nonary game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. Wait a sec. This leads to... Yeah, the hospital room. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. Oh! You've got to be kidding me. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. We may as well go. Yeah. Yeah, gonna be seeing Ace sooner than any of us expected. Except for Seven, I guess. As one, they all moved back toward the door Junpei had only, mo only a moment ago been ready to open. Oh, I almost forgot. We should keep this. He pulled the map from the ship's interior off the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. Just got a whole bunch of crap rattling around in my pockets between the maps and the keys. The six of them stood in front of the door, arranged in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke, without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. They ask every time. They nodded their silent assent. Got a little bit of consonants going on there. Lots of S's. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. They poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. I knew it. They were just where the map had said they would be. I mean... We only took like a couple turns and we didn't travel very far, so we really don't even need the map to know that. We're back. In the hospital room. I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. Oh, damn. Ace is awake already. I would have thought injecting anesthetic directly into your veins would have knocked you out for longer. I, I guess I don't know the dose. Ah, oh, hell, that clock better not sound and tell us we spent three or better hours in there or some shit. The six of you split into two teams and went through doors seven and eight. You solved the puzzles in the operating room and the laboratory, and then met one another in the hallway after opening your respective locked doors. Ah, oh, impressive. Not only is he not unconscious anymore, but he seems quite self-aware and cognizant. He's not even high. I want to party with Ace. He looked like anyone might after only just waking up, but it seemed that his brain was working as well as ever. He had managed to grasp, summarize, and understand each team's report. At any rate, I feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. Well, it's not like we're going to hold it against you. I know I said I was sure you'd come back for me. I didn't think it would happen so soon, though. Yeah, really subverted our expectations. Again, except for Seven. Ace shook his head with a rueful smile. Well, we saw each other again and we ain't dead, so I say that's good enough. Good enough for now. Seven smiled. Anyway, I say we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. The key? Oh, you guys too? Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. We found the Earth key in the laboratory. And I'd say there's probably a pretty good chance there was a key in behind door 3, too, but that's just speculation. I mean, you'd think I'd remember having played through the game, but I don't. Here. Seven tossed something small and metallic toward Junpei. Whoa. <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> kind of thinking he might have fumbled with it a bit there. Jeez. He caught it and found that the, ob the object was a key. I see. So this is Jupiter. No, Junpei, it's a key. 
On it, someone had engraved a symbol very similar to a four. He looked over at June, who nodded back. It had to be the Jupiter symbol. I'm gonna let you hold on to that, all right? <laughs> you don't have enough pockets on that jumpsuit? Well, whatever. If uh, you're really comfortable with me having access to all the maps and all the keys. Yeah, on it. Junpei tucked the new key into his pocket. So how many unused keys do we have now? Uh, three of them, because we found one in the kitchen and we just got two. There's the Earth key we found in the laboratory. The Saturn key card we found in the kitchen. And the Jupiter key you just gave me. The Saturn key card actually got us out of the kitchen, but I'm thinking it's good for more than that. Junpei tucked the new keys into his pocket. June spoke up. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long straight hallway, right? Oh, is it? Well, then it lets us get all the way back to the beginning of the game. Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Then, next to the stairs... Wait! They were the first words anyone had heard out of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy words. What about door three? Look, you saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. Just lead us back to the big hospital room. There's no point to seeing what's on the other side of that door. There is a point. At least there is for me. There were tears in her eyes, but she glared at seven as, as hard as she could, just the same. She looked very much like a frightened puppy. There wasn't a man alive who could have resisted those eyes. <laughs> I... I don't know about that. Clover's my cup of tea, but uh, I've seen a few other Let's Players react to her. And... I think there are a handful of people who could resist that face. Seven looked everywhere in the room except at Clover, and muttered and... Yeah, and muttered and coughed apologies under his breath. Yeah. You're right, I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of door three. That is possible, yeah. We searched everywhere else in the ship before going through any through the three numbered doors here. And now we know he's not behind seven or eight. And at no point have we had the opportunity to use any of these keys we've collected. So the only place he could be that we haven't searched is door three, at least that's how it seems. Clover nodded once. The next person to speak was Ace. Very well. I'll be coming with you then. I've had a nice long rest. I think it's time I was up and about again. Alright, so if it's Clover and Ace, that's five. So they'd need seven to go with them, so, because uh, one plus two from twelve is three. Either that, or we gotta go in a big group of like five people. So, Seven, you'll help me, won't you? Huh? Me? Junpei did the calculations quickly in his head. 4 plus 1 plus 7 equals 12, 1 plus 2 equals 3. It looked like Seven was doing them too. At last, he gave up. Damn. Well, I guess that's how it's gotta be. Eh, that's not the only way, but it's definitely the easiest. I think, uh... What if Ace, Clover, Lotus, Junpei, and June went? That would work, right? Let's see. There it is. I said Ace, Clover, Lotus, Junpei. I think I, did I say June? Because I meant Santa. Oh. Yeah, that, that opened door three. So I'm going with you, huh? Yes, you are. All right, let's get moving. And so it was decided that Clover, Ace, and Seven would discover what lay beyond door three. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful. Whoa. Didn't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. 
Yeah, that is the truth, actually. Three, five, and six can't open door nine with any combination. So, uh, don't screw up and let your bombs go off in there or anything like that. The rest of us can't open the nine door. Ah, the truth comes out. <laughs> That's not that surprising. Lotus is pretty cold a lot of the time, but she hasn't really been... <clears throat> But she hasn't really been hiding her motives. It wasn't super... It was pretty transparent when she did things like try and convince me and June to team up with her and go ahead of you guys, or kind of manipulated Clover into continuing with the game because we might be able to find Snake. She definitely puts herself first, but I mean, at least she's honest about it. Seven nodded as if this answer made much more sense, and pulled the lever on the red. Okay, we're off. The door opened, and Ace, Clover, and Seven jumped through it. Six, seven, eight. After exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. All right, we should get moving, too. Yeah, we are on a time limit. Huh? Get moving? Where are we going? Well, we gotta see what the rest of these keys do. Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. Yeesh. Some scenes we seem smart enough, other scenes we just can't keep up. Well, it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. Get it? We're gonna see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter key. Will that work? I thought that the key just let us loop back to the central staircase by the uh, first two doors that we entered. Actually, the Earth key might be back that way. I can't quite remember. No, that has to be right, actually. Because. I think the only other door we've run into with a planet symbol was that elevator with the Mercury symbol on it, on um, D-Deck. And I only remember that one because Junpei pointed out the horns on it and said it reminded him of Lotus, and then she beat his ass. But yeah, I think that's the only planet door that we've found since we entered any of the numbered doors. Before that, I think all we'd seen was on... Uh, uh, was by the staircase that we started at. Yes. If we're lucky, we might find Snake. That seems unlikely. Unless we actually failed to search as far back as the Grand... Or... No, no, that's, we definitely won't find Snake, because we no, none of us had the means of getting this far back into the ship until now. They were at the end of the hallway lined with by individual hospital rooms. And here's the Jupiter symbol on the keyhole. All right, Junpei, open it if you please. You got it, boss. Yeah, on it. Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a nice sharp click, he felt the door unlock. Junpei sucked in a breath, held it, and opened the door as qui er, as quietly as he could. Actually, quickly would have made more sense. He doesn't need to be quiet. Did I read that wrong? Nope. Inside was exactly what he expected to see, from the map of the ship's interior. They were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom, with a massive central staircase. Great! Back to the beginning! You sure this is a good idea? What do you mean? Pretty sure. Unless I'm remembering things wrong, at least the Earth Key should be through here. I'm not sure if we've seen the, uh... the Saturn Key. Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? No, it, uh, the Saturn key is probably here, because uh, the key cards are for the elevators rather than doors, and 
this staircase connects all the floors on the ship, so there's probably an elevator around here. I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. Uh, I don't feel like playing it dumb. Of course there's a reason, Santa. Keep up. Of course there's a reason. Man, sometimes I can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. Huh? This. Junpei pulled two things out of his pockets. The Saturn key card. And the Earth key? I'm lost. Santa cocked his head to one side, like an inquisitive bird, and looked at them. After several long moments, during which it became apparent that Santa had no idea what the cards meant, June took pity on him. Don't you remember, Santa? On Sea Deck, where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? Okay, it is, uh... We do also have access to the Saturn keycard. Or, we can also use the Saturn keycard, that is. I was half right in my original thinking. I didn't realize at first that we would be able to use both keys, though. And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. And on A deck, on the door to the left, there was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it. I think. <laughs> I think. Yeah, that's about where I was at. Even June's having trouble remembering. So, at least I'm not alone in that. So, the two keys that Jumpy has? Should let us use the elevator and the door on A-deck. Huh. Yes, that's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. So did Santa. You know, it, it's really fucked up that this would occur to me right now, but the way she explained that to Santa, June might actually be kind of good at teaching kids. All right, I got it. Let's get started then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, so you two can search Saturn, all right? Ah, uh, it's just like Scooby-Doo. We've got to get broken up into predictable patterns that put me and June together. Sounds good. Then you guys should take this key. They decided that their initial search should be brief. We have no idea what's on the other side of these. So don't go too far. Just search for ten minutes and come back. Plan decided. The two teams sp split it up. The two teams split up. Uh, I don't know. Usually when we split up, uh, it seems like that's when things start to get kind of sketchy. Uh, but then again, with the clock ticking, we don't have the luxury of exploring as a group. Junpei and June headed for the elevators. This music's kind of ominous. There's a card reader next to the left elevator. Then let's try out the Saturn key card. Oh, I remember this scene. Infamous little bit of dialogue here, if I recall correctly. A light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great. It looks like it's working now. All right. Now, how do I call the elevator? There was a single button to the right of the elevator door. Oh, it only has the upside down triangle on it. Huh. One way trip, then. <sighs> I guess there's no up button. Well, we may as well try pushing this one. The door slid shut, and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. It... it opened! Look, Jumpy! June's voice was excited, but Junpei could hear a tinge of anxiety. Oh, sweet! It opened! Let's get going! He grinned at June and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his left or on his arm. W w wait! Thought it said left arm for some reason. What? Uh, I'm not really. Uh, I just. Uh, oh gosh, 
Wow, she does sound anxious. Junpei was at something of a loss. What could she possibly be so frightened of? June was probably afraid of... Being locked up with a boy, or that they could only go down. Well, it couldn't possibly be because we're on sea deck, and going down would mean going into the flooded floors. Clearly, she's just afraid to be alone with Junpei, even though half of her dialogues with him are either sexual innuendos or sexual tension. And I'm definitely not picking this option up top because it creates a funny and deliberate misunderstanding between the two. After a little thought, Junpei decided that she had to be nervous about being locked up in such a small place with alone with a boy. Well, um, we will be all alone in here. In a way, it was kind of cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least, they didn't have to be. Hey, now we're talking. Although, weren't we pressed up against each other in a shower at one point earlier? I mean, fully clothed. But yeah, that's got to be at least as awkward as this. Still, it was making her nervous. Junpei couldn't help but think how innocent she was. Eh, no comment. <laughs> Jumpy? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. It's not important. Come on, let's go. Again, he stepped toward the elevator. And again, he felt himself restrained. I said wait a minute. Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well... I've never... you know... It's your first time? Oh, we're popping a cherry here. She'd never been in an elevator with a man alone before? Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might... get wet. <laughs> uh, oh, what? Down there. I get soaking wet. Down on floor E, you mean? Well, I, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet uh, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess there's sweat to take into account, but uh, that takes a minute to get going. That's... that's true. <sighs> you don't mind? Mind what? Getting wet. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I think I'd probably, um, you know, like it. Gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave. <laughs> really? Uh, I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? What happens, happens, right? I mean, if you get the chance, you've just got to go for it. I, that's what a man is supposed to do. I guess. Fuck. <laughs> June's got to be even more confused by this point than Junpei seems to be, right? I I know he thinks we're talking about getting his dick wet, but from her perspective, it's got to just seem like he's real eager to start drowning. You're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you. Jun envies your ability to be that promiscuous. Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. I... I'm really scared. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes. So, I don't think I'll be able to last very long. And then it'll be... over. All right, I think at this point she's caught on and she's just teasing us. Uh, over? Yes. We'll go to heaven. Heaven? It 
feels kind of like you're floating in space, and your mind gets all fuzzy, like when you pass out. Is that what drowning feels like? Sounds like you might be describing a different sort of little death. At least that's what I've heard from people who have experienced it. Ah, uh, yes, I've, I've heard that too. Although I, I don't think the same thing happens to guys. Wh what? Huh? But it would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. <laughs> well, I, I mean, um, usually it, it, it doesn't go inside the man. Uh, I mean, generally. <laughs> I love how fucking uncomfortable he sounds with it. I've never heard the voice acting for this game, so I didn't really know how he would sell that part. Fuck. <laughs> you know, you probably don't hear this very much on YouTube, but fuck am I glad I'm not monetized. Yes, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. Your body will force you to swallow some of it. Eventually. All right. I don't know what kind of freaky body you've got, but uh, I'm not about that life, June. What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> and by the sounds of it, neither is Junpei. Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that... That's what happens. It's a psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. Oh, is that so? <laughs> then it's only natural? Is that what's natural for living beings? Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years. Had he misunderstood life so gravely? The thought terrified him. June seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even then, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or, or even 10 minutes. Okay, now we're definitely talking about something different. Junpei should start to catch on. Eventually, you'd have to breathe, and then the water would get into your lungs. Once that happens, your body won't be able to get oxygen anymore, and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. Uh... Huh. Oh... Oh... Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Junpei finally figured it out. The two of you were discussing two very different sorts of salty fluid. Finally, Junpei understood. He understood what Jun was trying to say and why she was so scared. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You wouldn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> See? She was afraid that the only elevator button pointed down. Yeah, not really the kind of going down Junpei seemed to have in mind. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Junpei realized he hadn't seen elevators, a elevators on the A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. <sighs> Come to think of it, the lower floor, D-deck is completely underwater. An elevator heading to a submerged floor. That is pretty scary. Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Um, well, yes, I guess it did. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a motor noise like it was moving, and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, take a look inside. Junpei jerked his head toward the interior of the elevator. <laughs> it's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. That doesn't necessarily prove anything, though, if the uh, shaft itself is watertight. But I guess if we sent it down again... Oh, you're right. They it, are. Then the doors would have to open. 
She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. There we go. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Now, I'll just put one foot inside the elevator and look over at the buttons. Oh, there's only two. E and C. Huh. Skips D-deck entirely. Well, we know it's flooded. Unless there's a watertight door sealing part of it off somewhere, we probably don't want to go there. All right. I'll push E. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. The door slid shut, and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. I, I think I can hear it opening on E deck. Okay, that's done. Now I'll just press the button again. Well, that's a good sign. I imagine water would dampen the acoustics of it quite a bit. A few moments later, the elevator returned. Wall of water just smacks us in the face. Yep, not a single drop of water to be seen. See? Well, then I guess that confirms it. Junpei couldn't resist puffing out his chest just a little bit. June, however, still looked confused. What does that mean? How can E-deck be safe if the D-deck is full of water? That is interesting. Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E-deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the ship's been punctured. That is indeed possible, though. Here, uh, let me show you. He pulled out his notebook and pen and sketched out a rough illustration. I see. So is that why the ship hasn't sunk? Yeah, that is pretty rough, but it gets the job done. The shape of the inside keeps it all from filling with water? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Junpei continued talking as he closed the notebook and slipped it back into his pocket. So I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, all right? Um, but... Come on, just do it, all right? He gave June's shoulder a reassuring squeeze, then hopped onto the elevator. He pushed the E button, and the door began to close. June looked worried, her eyes darting back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision, when suddenly... I I'm coming with you! Uh, Alright, maybe we should avoid the word coming for just a little while. Huh? At the last possible moment, June dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the closing doors. Hey, wait! Junpei slammed his finger against the open button. But it was too late. Ah, oh, crap. It closed! The door had shut, he and June were in the elevator, and it was headed down to E-deck. He was so surprised by June that he didn't even have time to think about what awaited them on E-deck. I can't just let you go alone, you know. Ah, jeez. The elevator stopped, and the door slid open. They tentatively stepped out and looked around. Wait, didn't Junpei just say there were only two buttons on the elevator? Because on the right there, it looks like there are five. Well, I, I guess it's not hard to believe that Zero had disabled some of them. But then again, it's also not hard to believe that the dev team just kind of overlooked that detail. It looks normal. I mean, it doesn't look flooded. No fish going about their fishy business, or jellyfish lo floating lazily through the water. There was, however, a blowfish. Or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were puffed out, and her mouth a tiny, intense frown. I'll knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. No need to hold your breath. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked around nervously, then... 
<sighs> um, why did you pop up from like the very middle of the screen from a first person perspective? That seems suggestive. I mean, there's no way that's unintentional after the conversation we just had. Hell, they even went out of their way to call her a blowfish. They could have said puffer, but no, that that wasn't sexual enough, was it? Exhale. You're right. June, it's not flooded at all. June exhale. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Junpei thought about that for a moment. Well, we'd probably get really wet up there. <laughs> huh? At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can, once we're done looking around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay, good idea. Now then... Junpei glanced around the room they'd found themselves in. The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Iron bars. Well, we can't go over there. Right. Then maybe... In the corner of the room that housed the elevators, Junpei found an opening. Well... He walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. It looks like there's a long straight hallway down this way. And it looks like another numbered door beyond that. Something's written on the door at the end. Wait, is that... Let's check. I mean, we can see it pretty clearly. Junpei and Jun set off down the hallway at a brisk clip. Somewhere between a run and a jog. Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. On it was a number written in bright red paint. Six. I knew it! This is a numbered door! Number six. So, we've already opened doors three, four, five, seven, and eight. We just found door six, so that leaves one and two in our way before we can get to door nine, yeah? There's a, probably a pretty good chance that Lotus and Santa found another numbered door through the earth door that they're exploring. As for the last one, more than likely we'll find a way to access it in the form of a key beyond door number three, where Clover, Ace, and Seven are exploring. So actually, we might be about in the end game of this. And indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to the door. But we can't do anything with only the two of us. Yeah, even if we wanted to, we need at least three people. We better head back and let everyone know. Yes. Junpei and Jun turned and headed back to Sea Deck. Wait, what's this? On their way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. Oh, shit. I was just complaining earlier in this episode that we don't usually get these until after we've already gone through the numbered doors. I guess Zero decided to take it easier on us this time. Is this the map for E-Deck? I should take it with me. Yeah, you should. So you guys found door one. Ah, as I suspected. They'd met back up with Santa and Lotus, who had explained what they'd found. Apparently, there was another numbered door on the A deck, just like the one on E deck, beyond the door that the Earth key opened. According to Santa and Lotus, there was a one on the door. So now we've located two new doors, the six door and the one door. You know, it is interesting that E-Deck wasn't flooded. That's what I said. Lotus was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. Well, we don't really know if all of E-Deck is safe. A uh, fair point. We only checked the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting. Honestly, if other parts of that floor are flooded, that's even more interesting. How modified is this ship? You said the sixth door was there, right? That's right. Yes. 
Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. Yeah. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. No doubt. A lot of time and money, and... And not really something you could do DIY, probably? Although... I, I don't really see how they could hire anybody to remodel this thing and keep them quiet about it. Especially with as suspicious as some of these modifications sound like they'd be. That's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. Somebody who could set up a watertight door would probably be able to figure out what he was doing with it. Yeah, I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how much it must have cost. It would have been a ton, that's for sure. Well, that does go along with what Ace was saying, the most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization with access to a whole lot of cash. Yeah, that's still probably the most likely explanation. Even if a large organization like that seems like it would be prone to leaks. Uh, if there's something like organized crime or the like, they might, s or even just somebody with enough money, it might be possible, though, that they have the ability to coerce anybody who was involved in, to, in this into keeping quiet. Yes, it does make sense. That thought made them all go quiet for a moment. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> June bit her lip, while Lotus sighed softly to herself, and Santa cracked a stiff neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. Um... Yeah? Um, I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. June looked up at Junpei with large, pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Fair point. Well, June, Junpei, and I should be able to open door one. Huh? You guys leaving me behind? Oh, please. Did you see how... Or... Did you see how June freaked out when we had to leave Ace behind earlier? There's no way she'd let us go on without you or the others. 8 plus 6 plus 5 equals 19. 1 plus 9 equals 10. 1 plus 0 equals 1. But yeah, we could do it. Just kidding. Alright, let's go. Lotus's words were all the impetus they needed. Back to the large hospital room they went. The moment they stepped inside, a tremendous voice echoed across the room. Okay, this time it probably actually is Seven's voice. Hey! Where the hell did you guys go? Called it. And, uh, we went to the casino to get a drink. Calm our nerves. Looks like you could use one, too, actually. It was Seven. Seven? Hmm. Uh... Maybe Ace shouldn't drink, though. He looks really depressed. Um. Ace was right behind him, and Clover was behind Ace, although she seemed to be hanging back. What's wrong? Uh-oh. It looked as though there was something strange about them. Seven had the look of a man who'd seen a ghost. Ace was just as pale and Clover looked as though she was only moments from passing out entirely. For a long moment, they simply stood there, looking at one another. Junpei looked around nervously, waiting for someone else to speak. No one did. He looked at Seven. What happened? What the hell kind of question is that? A logical one? Seven was trying very hard to be angry, but something had shaken him. Hard. His shoulders were trembling, and his voice was strained. Snake was... Snake is... Oh, shit. Fuck, man, not another death. Seven couldn't finish. He just looked away his face twisted by... Junpei wasn't sure what. 
and if we found him behind door number three, then somebody must have forced him through there. Ah, oh, man, and he went out the same way as the ninth man. But that would mean at least two of us have been running around keeping this a secret for hours. I... I mean, I guess it's possible, but that's a grim thing to think about. Somebody must have a hell of a poker face. Instead, Ace spoke. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and spoke. Snake is... dead. He died, just as the ninth man did. It was as if all the air had suddenly been sucked out of the room. Junpei felt his heartbeat quicken, and he realized he was having trouble breathing. He could feel cold sweat beating on his forehead and, and neck. June, Santa, and Lotus looked the way he felt. All three were frozen in place, their faces white. Oh my god, that's not true, is it? Uh, if it's not true, then they're even better actors than whoever kept the murder a secret. We should make sure. Oh, but do we have to, though? No, I'm kidding. I love these gory descriptions. Let's do it. Yeah, right. We should. They nodded to one another and headed for the number three door. Wait! Not that way! What? Why not? They stopped short and turned to look at Seven. He was pointing at the door with no number. I stuck a screwdriver in there to keep the door from closing all the way. It's not locked, so you can go in that way. Oh, that's clever. It lets us avoid authenticating. Uh, where is, uh, where is he? The shower room, on the left side of the hallway. I put a broom in there, too, to keep the door open. That means we can get in without going through the numbered door, right? Which I guess means there's no risk of anybody else blowing up, at least. Yeah, that's right. Then let's go. Their new destination clear, Junpei and his companions headed for the door with no number. Once in the hallway, it was easy to spot the metal door on the left wall. This wasn't open when we passed here before. But now, just as Seven had said, there was a broom stuck between the door and the frame, keeping it open. Well, let's keep going. They looked at it for a moment, then stepped inside. Oh, it smells horrible. Lotus wrinkled her nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even Santa pinched his nose shut. Ugh, yeah, this is pretty awful. I feel like I'm gonna puke. It was just as bad as they said. Perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air. So thick they could almost taste it. It was sour. It smelled of fish, feces, and burnt meat. It worked its way through Junpei's nose and down his throat to pound against the entrance of his stomach. Ah, hell. Can I go back to talking about swallowing cum with June? This is nasty. <sighs> he put his hands over his mouth and struggled to keep what little was in his stomach where it belonged. Uh, hmm. Where is he? Where's Snake? Oh, uh, that's probably a safe bet. They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There. There was blood everywhere. A few arms of the splatter reached toward them as they walked in through the door. All one had to do was follow the many radial arms to their source. The body itself was hidden behind a divider. June, you should stay here. 
honestly, I don't know if I could stay put. As horrifying as it is, this seems like one of those times when morbid curiosity would just get the better of you. Or, or at least me. But... Please, just do me a favor, okay? Alright? He didn't give her a chance to say no. He put his hand on her shoulder, as if to shove her into the ground like a tent pole, turned, and walked toward the end of the divider. I'm going in. It felt like it took an eternity for him to get there. <sighs> Santa and Lotus followed, timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded slowly. Junpei put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. Ugh. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton, and time froze. He knew in that instant that he would take the image before him to the grave. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh, torn from the body, sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast, ragged hole had been torn in the torso, and what remained of his intestines spilled out like fresh spaghetti. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and become stuck there as they dried. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. <laughs> Just like he said. Santa's voice was strained. Junpei suspected he was holding down vo some vomit of his own. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. Oh god, the, the bone is coming out of his left arm. It's definitely an open fracture. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Hmm. Oh, the face. It's horrible. Yeah, you can't even tell who it is. Okay, a few of these lines seem really deliberative, both that we can't identify the face of his bracelet or, well, his face. Are we really sure that's Snake? Or is the game just trying to set up a red herring by pointing out these suspicious details on the sly? Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with yellow piping, and the gray slacks. But the clothes are... They were all familiar to Junpei. No mistake about it. It's Snake. Lotus's voice was unnaturally deep and strained, and Junpei heard it catch in her throat.
Talk about the mood turning on a dime. This had been a pretty light-hearted episode up until this last revelation. But today it looks like we're leaving things off on a somber note. Grieving alongside the rest of the cast at the loss of Snake. So, I'll see you all when we next resume the Nonary game, where, no matter how gruesome, whatever happens, happens. <laughs>